Okay, well, um, I'm in West Virginia today, and it is July 29th. It's rained for about three days, and I think we've got somewhere around four inches of rain so far, and I think it's going to rain the rest of the day, but tomorrow it should clear up and everything will be okay. So, um, I took the opportunity while it's raining to, um, uh, to make some feeders for my bees, and, um, the reason I've done that is because I, I can't burden somebody else with, you know, feeding my bees while I'm away. And, uh, you know, I live 155 miles away from my beehive. So I've got to always learn how to, um, you know, maximize my time and uh, maximize the bees' time and, um, you know, enable the bees to do things while I'm away, but also enable me to do things while I'm away. Anyway, um... So what I did was uh, I've, I've watched a, a bunch of um, videos on how to make uh, bee feeders out of five-gallon buckets. And it's, it's very simple. And um, a lot of these guys, uh, Jeep 1952, I think, is the main guy. Um, the Dirt Rooster, I think, has made these. Um, Barnyard Bees, he's made them. Uh, pretty simple operation to do. And all you need is a five-gallon bucket. This one's from Home Depot, and I bought, uh, I think, about 10 of them. And uh, so the reason, the reason that I bought 10 of them is because I'm going to France in a few weeks uh, during, during uh, September, and um, so I'm going to be gone for about 20 days. And so I need to be able to feed these guys, girls, while I'm gone. And, um, but anyway, the way that you do this is very simple. Um, the, uh, the bees are going to feed with the bucket upside down like this. But the area that they're going to feed in is this area, the bucket right here. And um, it's a little reservoir in there. And so what you do is you drill holes through the bucket, but not through the reservoir area on the outside. And when you put the lid on, which is a um, an airtight seal, waterproof seal, um, it's going to create a vacuum. And uh, the vacuum is going to make it so that the, uh, the sugar water doesn't just run out. Now, you will lose maybe a quart or so. I don't even think it's a quart. But uh, you're going to lose some when you first turn over the bucket, but don't, don't worry. Um, it's not all going to run out on you. Your, your, uh, your sugar water is not going to all be wasted uh, for all running out. But um, the tools you're going to need are a drill. The bit that I used is a 764 inch bit. If you don't have one, 764, maybe a 564, something like that, uh, would probably work uh, just as well. But uh, you don't want it too big, um, you know. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. But uh, every drill kit, every drill bit kit should have a 764 in it. They're pretty common, pretty standard. Um, need a tape measure or a measuring device of some type. The way I did it, you're going to need a stapler and I'll show you why. And you'll need a flashlight or a light source of some kind. You're going to need a, uh, a paint stick and it can be a small one or a large one. Uh, the one that I used is small and the way that you see it right now it's uh, broken in half but I'll show you why I broke it in half. And uh, a marking device, a sharpie works just fine. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to measure the distance from the bottom of the bucket to the top of the reservoir and from the bottom of the bucket to the bottom of the reservoir. And we're basically going to split the difference is what we're going to do. Or what I did. That's what I did. So you don't want the, uh, the hole that, that you're going to drill too high or else all the water will run out. You want it low enough where the pressure will let the water level rise, the bees can get to it, and as they drink it, it'll continually leak down. Um, so, in our case here, three inches is the, uh, is the distance to the top. And to the bottom is about two and one-eighth inches. So, what I did was I split the difference. Um, and we're going to be at about two and a quarter inches. And... Um, 
that's uh, that's about two thirds of the way down, and that's a pretty good level. Now, one thing that uh, that I'd like to remind you not to do. Um, don't take that distance and, and take it as, as the golden word. Um, make sure that you test this out for yourself and see if it's you know if it if it if you're satisfied with it. Um, what I did was I took that distance and um, I uh, drilled a few holes and then I then I tested it. I just tested it with plain water because it was very easy. Just about two gallons of water. Tested it. Saw if I uh, if I liked the uh, the way that the water came out or not. Thought it was okay and that's what I went with. Um, so, so what you want to do now is you want to take your, uh, your paint stick and what I did was I broke mine basically in half and um, what this is going to do um, is it's going to help you mark your line on the inside of the bucket. So what I did was I broke it in half, I measured the distance, two and a quarter inches, I, I laid them on top of each other, excuse me. See. See how I laid them on top of each other? And then I took the stapler and I stapled it together. But then what I did was I took and I measured from here to the overlay or the overlap about two and a quarter inches. And I stapled it together. And the reason is, is because that overlap right there, it's going to stay on the lip of the bucket. And then all you have to do is take your Sharpie, lay it on the edge of the bucket and strike a line. That's all you have to do is go around the bucket. And I just made big dashes. You'll see on the inside of the bucket, but I just made dashes. And then uh, I just kind of eyeballed it. And it, it works just fine. So, all you do I don't know how well you can see this. Let me, let me turn it this way. Oops. So, are you, all you're going to do now is take your, your scale Lay it on the inside of the bucket with that lip, and then you're going to make your mark. And then all you're going to do is just go around the bucket making your mark with your Sharpie. Now, <laughs> the way that I'm doing it right now, there's no way you can do it because you don't have three hands. But um, basically, just lay your bucket on the, um, on the table or whatever work surface you're working with and strike the, um, strike the distance. It's very easy. Then what you want to do after you after you go all the way around the bucket and you see that um, I think you can see where you can see where I went around the bucket. The next thing that you want to do before you drill any holes is you want to take your flashlight or your light source, and it doesn't have to be super bright. But what you want to do is I'm going to hold it up this way. You want to shine your light right where the handle goes uh, is attached to the bucket. It's really important. The thing is, is that you don't want to drill a hole there, because if you do, then all the all the syrup is going to leak through the hole where the um, where the bucket handle is attached. So, what I did, because that's what everybody told me to do, was I made a big X right in the reservoir where the handle was attached. And the reason that you make the big X there, that means no, don't don't make a hole there because if you do, you're you're in trouble. <laughs> you have to patch it some way with silicone or something like that. Um, so make your X there, and then all you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, your drill and drill your holes. Now make sure that um, you drill your holes at that level or maybe a little bit deeper. I drilled mine a little bit deeper. They're probably, I don't know, two and three sixteenths or something like that. Uh, because when I tested it, I felt like the water came up a little bit too high. And um, so I, I just drilled them a little bit lower. But uh, make sure that you drill four or five of them, test it out, and then um, just make sure that uh, the level is to your satisfaction. And when you get the right level, then go ahead and mark it out and, uh, and drill your holes like that. Um, I did um, ten buckets this morning. It might have taken me an hour. It's not really bad at all. I mean, once you get a, a little system going, it's really easy stuff. And then um, all you do is um, you put your lid on top, and then when you get to uh, where you're going to um, to place your water feeder, you just turn it upside down, 
a little bit of water is going to drain out, and then you'll uh, the uh, after the la 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 la. Once you turn it upside down, a little bit of water is going to leak out, and that's what's supposed to happen. Um, but the reason why it's leaking out is because it's creating a vacuum. And once that vacuum is created in the bucket, um, it'll stop leaking out until water is taken away. Once that balance, you know, when, when the balance is um, less on one side than the other side, then a little bit more water will leak out, and that's from the bees eating or drinking the water, the syrup. Um, so that's kind of how I did it. Um, it worked really well. I've got one out there right now, upside down, and um, and the bees are after it, along with uh, every other flying insect in the uh, I don't know, five mile radius of my house here. <laughs> but uh, but it's okay. Uh, the bees need it. It's uh, that time of the year. We're in uh, late July. First of August is next week, and uh, so um, this is the time that the bees need some uh, need a little bit of help. So, um, but I'm going to walk out there and. Uh, and show you the one that I got going right now. Um, I'm leaving West Virginia tomorrow, uh, it's Sunday afternoon, and when I do, I'll have um, probably th at least I'll have three of them out there probably. And um, each five-gallon bucket will probably last two days, so they'll have six days worth of syrup, and uh, they should be good to go until um, I come back on uh, on Friday evening next week. So. I personally think this is the best way to do it. I have a five-gallon chicken waterer. I have a three-gallon chicken waterer, and um, it's too much of a hassle, to be quite honest with you. You know, even when they're out of water, the bees are after them because they're still licking the surf off. Um, whatever surface you've given them to land on, I I put uh, small stones in there for them to land on. Um, but then you've got to take it apart. You've got to open it up. Um, this is pretty much a hands-free deal. Turn it upside down, and you walk away until it's empty. When it's empty, they're going to go to the next one, if there is a next one. Um, and if you want to um, put up another one, easy peasy. You walk right out there with it, bucket in hand, tops on it, secure. You turn it upside down, the vacuum creates itself, uh, the bees find it again, and you walk away. You're good for two or three days. So, um, I don't know. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, the bees have been a, a really great thing for me in my uh, small 140 tree apple orchard. And, uh, you know, we're coming into uh, my first fall with the bees. And, you know, I'm doing everything I can to ensure that they, uh, that they have the best opportunity to, um, to make it through the wintertime. Um, I don't want to have to buy bees again. <laughs> it gets expensive. <laughs> but thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, give me some feedback if you, if you like. I don't mind good, bad, and different. It's okay. Um, you know, we're all in this together, and we all learn from each other. And these videos are great. Uh, mine aren't the best, but uh, hopefully it'll help somebody out there um, trying to do the same thing I'm doing. And uh, for all you guys out there that, uh, that keep making these videos for us, man, don't stop. We need them. You know, guys like me that don't have a lot of experience, uh, I'll watch every one of them I can watch and try to apply, you know, what I've learned um, to, my, to my little apiary. And, um, you know, thanks again. Have a great day.